one of the things that I thought as we were planning today that, you know, those of us who have been immersed in this issue for many years, which is most of the people in this room, we, we are so committed to sort of the cause that I think we sometimes forget the human toll that not having these laws um, takes. And, you know, one of the things I thought would be really valuable is to hear from Brian, who really began the effort in Washington that I think has inspired so many people. And again, even though Washington has been not been successful, <laughs> Oregon has a state law today because of what happened in Washington. Um, um, Brian was the person who really got that all started, and maybe, Brian, you can explain how that happened, but um, I, I asked him if he could talk a little bit about, from the perspective as a student journalist, why this mattered, why it was important. So, Brian, if you don't mind, just for a few minutes, give us your thoughts. Yeah, um, <clears throat> well, and at the risk of sort of using a quote lead, I wanted to read a couple of excerpts from something that I, th I thought was uh, kind of relevant to this discussion, uh, and then talk about it afterwards. I'm someone who listens to many, but is heard by a few, and it's not a lack of effort. It's not because I don't try to be heard, or because I don't speak loud enough. It's because everything I believe, everything I value, everything I say, all falls on deaf ears. The louder I talk, the harder they try not to listen, because apparently I can't have an opinion or a voice at 15. I'm not entitled to it. I haven't earned it. I'm not capable of understanding it. There are a million excuses. I'm supposed to just fade from the thoughts and minds of adults like a trophy kept in storage and brought out on special occasions, something to be stared at and admired and then passively returned to the closet until the next function. Don't shut the door on me because I look like one of those damn rotten teenagers, because I'm not one of those damn rotten teenagers. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't vandalize public bathrooms and parked cars. Those are stereotypes that exist only in your mind. Uh, that was something that I wrote. Uh, when I was 15 and sort of, I guess, angry at being shut out from the conversations about the world that were happening uh, at, at that time. And I guess sort of what I wanted to get across was that in, in all the, the conversations that we have about, you know, uh, committee hearings and, and, you know, lobbying and statutory protections and, and all of this stuff, I think it's important that we not forget why we're doing this and, and who we're doing this for and, frankly, who's you know, whose fight this really is. Um, you know, so when it comes to this legislation, people, they oftentimes, they ask me, you know, why, do, why do you care so much? Uh, and it's a legitimate point because I'm, I'm not in high school anymore and this, this isn't really going to do a whole lot for me. Um, but when you hear the stories and you hear them every day from the SPLC and, and other places about the, the kinds of censorship that goes on, I think for me, at the heart of every one of those stories, uh, is a student whose voice wasn't heard, who was told that what they had to say didn't matter, uh, was irrelevant. And, you know, that that bothers me. Um, and I know I'm sort of preaching to the choir here, but but I know what it feels like to, to be that guy because I, I've been that guy uh, in some respects. So, you know, I think so often as a young person you're told to, to sit down, be quiet. And at a time in your life when you need so much, I think, for somebody to tell you to stand up uh, and to figure out who you are and what you believe in and, and what you're going to do with this gift called the rest of your life. Um, and, and I think if we're not doing that in the public school system, uh, what are we doing? You know, maybe we ought to just pack it up and, and go home. You know, because education to me isn't about you know rote memorization of facts and then parroting that back to you know, somebody on a test, it's about, you know, learning how to be a person and learning how to be a citizen. And I don't think we, I don't know, I think at some point maybe we've lost our way when it comes to that. Um, you know, so for me this legislation goes beyond First Amendment doctrine and frankly, for me personally, it goes beyond journalism really. It's, to me, it's about giving young people the opportunity to say something and to speak and to be heard on their terms uh, in a way that, frankly, I don't think they can be uh, in so many other venues that are out there. Um, so that's kind of where I'm coming from uh, on this thing. I read a great, great quote from a student actually in Oakland, California uh, the other day, and this is what uh, she said. She was, they were asking her about uh, involvement in public schools and how do you get involved in uh, making change in your district, and this is what she said. 
go to the district and make a change. It's possible in Oakland, but it's the whole fact that you got to be prepared to take the responsibility of making that change. It's not easy to make a change. You got to stick to it. And oftentimes as youth, we feel that we can't do it. So we just give up. You need facts, you need information, you need to be educated on what administrators say they're doing and what students say they're doing. You got to keep going to the meetings and not let any, anybody run over you. You got to be willing to study the information, you got to be willing to survey, you got to be willing to ask people about it, you got to understand. And isn't that what student journalists do every day? They try to understand the world, they try to understand uh, people. And I guess what I'm getting at here is, again, we can't forget about what this is all about. It's about students. Uh, for all the talk about uh, politics and lobbying and, and, you know, again, all those sorts of things. Um, when we had our House hearing on the bill in Washington, and again, I don't want to get into, you know, war stories too much, but uh, that was, frankly, one of the best experiences that I have ever been a part of in my entire life. Um, we had students who literally drove for hours to come out to this thing. Um, and I think so much more than, you know, Dave up the Grove or me or anybody else, it was them being there that had an impact on the people in that room. And even though we ultimately failed in passing the bill, um, that, was a, that was a big victory, I think, for me anyway. Because for that brief period in time, uh, it was the principals and the administrators and the legislators uh, who got to do the listening. And for the students in that room on that day, it was their chance to have something to say and to be heard by people uh, who could potentially do something about it. And you know, I think a lot of people when they look at starting one of these efforts, and it does take a lot of energy, uh, you know, I can tell you that, um, they think about, you know, what if we fail? Uh, what, what, if we, what if we don't get it done? What, what if? Uh, and, and I can sort of tell you that, you know, I've been there twice now when it's not happened. And I, and I guess what I come back with is, is what if we don't do anything? And what if we do what I think in a lot of cases we've been doing for the last several years, which is not doing it? Uh, and, and nothing's going to ever happen if we don't, if we don't try at least. Uh, and again, the, the having the students there, uh, you know, making the argument and not just, they weren't just there to, to sort of get out of school for the day. They were there, uh, you know, to really make their case. And I thought they did it pretty effectively. Um, I, I thought that was a victory, uh, you know, again, uh, maybe that matters a little bit more than, you know, statutory protections or, you know, getting an actual bill signed by uh, the man in power. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Uh, I guess we're, are we running out of time? No, we're good. Okay. Um, well, I guess the last thing that, that I would sort of mention is, you know, again, people ask me, why do I care so much? Um, and, and it's because they care so much, the, the students who showed up for that thing. Um, and, and they wrote and they testified uh, and they defended this thing and they carried on when, when it didn't go their way. Um, but most importantly, they spoke up and they had their say about why this was important. Uh, and so that's why I care. Uh, ultimately because, you know, I care about the people who are spending today being the damn rotten teenager uh, that I was not long ago. And, and ultimately I do it for uh, a girl who came up to me after a conference when I was presenting uh, some information on, on the bill. And she came up to me and, and she looked so nervous and she just, she came up to me and she said, I just want to thank you for all that you do. And, and that, that was it right there. You know, that's, that's why I do this and that's why I care. So. What, what do I know? I'm just a punk kid. <laughs> Not 15 anymore, but... No. Thank you, Brian. I, I, I think that, you know, is always a key reminder why this is important to us. So thank you very much. Questions of Brian? Anything about that? Yeah, Tori. Real question. As I was hearing you speak so well, Brian, it occurred to me um, how this last election cycle, so much of the change that we are all so hopeful for, was very grassroots driven and I guess, you know, I haven't been a part of this group or this movement as long as many of you in this room have been. I mean, what is the possibility? What is the climate for something that's more grassroots led? And our roots here are our students. Um, are they, they certainly were capable of showing up for 
Senator Obama, I do wonder on an issue like this. I mean, I've actually had a couple students approach me just last week. They want to do a forum on student speech in February. Would I be a part? Sure. Who else could talk? Sure. And there's definitely an interest there. I just I wonder to what extent that could be mobilized. I'm curious about your thoughts about that. Do you think that that's possible? Well, I mean, I think in, in our case in Washington, you know, it, I don't want to take too much credit for it, but, you know, kind of the how it got started was, you know, me and going to, to talk to the sponsor. But, um, you know, I thought that one of the most powerful, again, one of the most powerful things that we did was to, to mobilize students. And, you know, I, for a time there, I saw that as being sort of my role. And, and so I went around and tried to, you know, kind of light a fire under people. Um, and, and I really do think it's possible.